Okay, let's talk about catatonia. Catatonia is a syndrome, and it's characterized by psychomotor signs or symptoms that occur in the context of psychiatric or medical illness. Usually, this context is a mood disorder, such as bipolar disorder, even major depressive disorder. However, you can also see it in psychotic disorders like schizophrenia. Other disorders such as autism spectrum or even general medical illness can present with catatonia. You treat catatonia with benzodiazepines such as lorazepam, but if it's very severe or even intractable cases, you can use electroconvulsive therapy. Usually you want to do a trial of intravenous lorazepam to support your diagnosis and you want to look for any relief of the patient's symptoms. Let's talk about some of the clinical features of catatonia. Immobility or excessive purposeless activity. If the patient is really not alert, they're not responding to any stimuli. They're very resistant to instructions and also movement. This is called negativism. Sometimes the patients are in very weird positions that are against gravity. This is called posturing. There's another thing called waxy flexibility. This is where you try to move the patient. They have initial resistance and then the patient stays at that new posture. The patients can also mimic you with your speech and also your movements. The repetition of a person's speech is called echolalia. And in catatonia, you can see this, but also remember, you can see this in schizophrenia, even autism. Echopraxia is this involuntary imitation of another person's movements. And again, you can also see this in schizophrenia, even tic disorders like Tourette's. So if I have a patient who is immobile, they are not talking to me, they are very resistant when I try to help them move or they're not listening to any of my commands. But every time I reach for the gloves and put them on, they seem to copy me and put on imaginary gloves of their own. I can be suspecting catatonia here. Low patients with lesions to the frontal cortex could also have akinetic mutism. Remember, it's not accompanied by any type of echo phenomena, such as the echopraxia that I was explaining. Now, if my patient is having some type of resting tremor, maybe they are moving but really slowly, like bradykinesia, or if they're somewhat very rigid, such as having some cogwheel rigidity when I try to move them, depending on the drugs that the patient is taking, you can start to consider even drug-induced Parkinsonism.